Update with Dan Frio. We're going to talk today. We're really discussing first time home buyers. So if you're a first time home buyer out there and you got some questions, Kyle is actually, he just found out that his parents have COVID. Both of them tested positive. And unfortunately, he's starting to feel a little bit down in the dumps. So he decided to just uh, lay low tonight. So it is me and me only. So I apologize. I jumped on here at the last minute. My camera is pretty bad. I'm just using my laptop camera. I got home. I usually just plug in, link in, and good to go. But unfortunately, today, I couldn't do that. So here we are. We are doing a live event. And I have actually a credit repair person, or actually a credit person. So we try to discuss on the channel. Is, is Kyle does a fantastic job at it. And uh, I'm joining him on a lot of these uh these live streams is to answer all the questions that you guys have in regards to, you know, possibly buying your first house. So that's what we would love to uh, talk to you guys about today. I know you guys hopefully joined me on my afternoon uh, live event. We talked about what's going on with the Fed. So if you're joining us now, um, I'd, I'd just like to find out where you guys are coming from. Where, where do you live? And I have a text out to Kyle. He's like I said, he's under the weather. His parents came down with COVID and he thinks he's going to be sitting on the sidelines tonight. So without further ado, uh, let's get over to it. I need you guys to participate tonight. So again, if I just saw, saw all of a sudden, blam, there was about 20 or 30 people just jumped on. Kyle is, uh, has, he thinks he might have COVID. His parents came down with it and he was visiting them recently. And now he's feeling down in the dumps. So we have Bebo from LA. So if anybody out there is, is watching, please just let me know where you're coming from. Today is going to be just a complete participation day. Okay. So Kyle, like I said, he's a little under the weather. I, one of the biggest questions that people have a lot of times is, Dan, what kind of credit do I need? So we want to really talk today about credit and anything else you guys have. I don't have any agenda today. It, basically, I mean, your beck and call, ask the expert, ask the expert. Let me just give you a little bit of context about me. So if you guys are new to me and my channel, my name is Dan Frio. I am, I run the Frio team and Kyle uh, Seagraves, win the house you love it. He is part of my team. He's a loan officer there. I control everything on the internals. So if you've been trying to reach out to Kyle um, and you're having a tough time, please be, bear with us. The amount of people requesting information in regards to mortgages from his channel is overwhelming. So thank you so much. But I'm going give, to give you all my information. It's down below. So you can see the 800 number, the rate update. Please call that number. If you're trying to reach out to Kyle and his team, I know he has his own separate uh, call line. But if you call this line, you're having trouble getting a hold of Kyle or any of his loan officers, please call this line. I am helping my internal staff is helping him kind of get caught up with all their stuff. So let's go through. Where is everybody coming from? So we got Courtney. Let's go to the top of here. We got Bebo from L.A. We have Courtney from Austin, Texas in the house. We have Miss Pollard from Louisiana. We got Rose Fisher. Hello, I'm from Virginia. We got Christine Christian Smith from Dallas. We got you guys from all over the place. Awesome. And we got Boxing Fan from Las Vegas. Oh, there's more coming in. Michelle Mamulin from Chicago. So I am in uh, actually the Chicagoland area. I'm not in Chicago. I'm out actually in the suburbs. We have people from Atlanta. So all over the place. So guys, here's what I want you to do. It's a participation day. We know what the Federal Reserve did. So they're making housing even more affordable with the way they're doing with rates. But what we want to focus in on here is what questions do you guys have if you're looking to buy maybe your first property, maybe your first investment property. Uh, maybe you're an investor out there and you have a lot of properties and you're like, I'm, I'm having a tough time with this. We have DSCR programs. But for those out there, especially in Kyle's realm, because this is really Kyle's channel, is we're trying to help first time home buyers get in their homes. OK, so the, the tough part of a lot of those is. You might have a brand new job that we need to kind of massage there to figure out what kind of income you have. Maybe your credit has a little bit of an issue. So we're going to talk about credit. I actually have a credit expert coming on and I just uh, had a big conversation with him, actually a live event recently. And I learned a lot of stuff. One of my first videos that I did got 250,000 uh, hits kind of like that. And then it kind of dissipated because it wasn't a great video, but it just showed me how important or how much people are confused when it comes to credit. So without further ado, while we're waiting for my credit uh, expert to come on, he'll be joining us here shortly. I'll go over any questions that you have. So the first question I have is I have a couple. This is from Janet uh, Santiago. So let's see what she has. I have a couple of. Okay. What is the ideal credit score for a mortgage? Okay. We'll, we'll answer that. Conventional FHA, USDA, NACO, 
which FICO score do mortgage lenders use? What is the good debt ratio? And can you qualify above 40? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so let's break this down. What is the ideal credit score for a mortgage? So let me break that down kind of briefly. The best credit score you can have is a 740. Okay, so 740 gets you, think of it, you're trying to pass a test. So if you get a 90.5, you passed. Okay, that's all you really need, a 90.5. Okay, so if you have a 740, you got an A. All right, so you're going to get the best rate out there. There is variations of that if you're looking for a jumbo loan or some other type of loans, but normally a 740 credit score is right in the realm of that's going to get you the best rate. And then with all, all the factors coming into that is how much money you're going to put down, what kind of property it is. And there's a whole bunch of other things, but your credit scores are one of the most important things that, that we're looking for. So that's why I'm kind of have, I'm trying to get a, a credit analyst on here today. Uh, Kyle jumping out at the last minute. I apologize. I think he's got COVID and it kind of threw a little monkey wrench into how we're trying to sync all this live stream. So bear with us. I'm going to try to get on to all the questions and I'm going to try to be brief this time so we can get more and more. So we continue with Janet. Uh, FHA, USDA, NACA. Okay, so FHA, again, you only really need to qualify for an FHA loan a 580 credit score. But to be honest with you, if you had a 580 credit score, your rate's going to be really bad. Okay, so the higher you get that credit score, again, if you get it to 740 or above, that's you're in A category, the A category range. Okay, same thing with USDA. Just think of it. My credit score I need for all these programs is basically 740. We can do loans, believe it or not, all the way down to 500. Those are really hard. But FHA, the FHA loan programs start with a 580 credit score. You're only required to put three and a half of a, of a down payment down. So that's the realm to go. Uh, which FICO scores do lenders use? There's probably about 50 different uh, FICO scores, and that's what we're going to have to help have our credit analyst uh, explain to you guys. But what we use is the mortgage score. Okay, there's a mortgage. I forget exactly what it is, but each each repository has multiple scores. So if you if you actually went to, I created a website called uh, Credit Scores and More. It's plural. You can go there and actually, believe it or not, pull your own credit. The exact same credit reports that we would pull. Okay, that's one of the only sites you can really do that. And when you do that, you go in there and you pay for the service. And it's going to come up with probably about 31 different credit scores, believe it or not. So what we use is the mortgage scores in each one of the categories. There are variations. There's like a there's a TransUnion model, four, eight, seven, things like that. There's variations of that. I'm not exactly sure. I think the mortgage score right now is using the TransUnion eight or five series. But what we're really focusing on is you won't you won't probably be able to get this that that credit score unless you really get your go out there and order your credit report. So just use some of the free systems. If you have a Discover card or you did, do get your Equifax or TransUnion or subscribe to that, just strive to get it to 740 or above. And if you're not at 740 or above, you're at 720 or whatever, don't lose sleep. OK, uh, what is a good debt ratio? Well, a good debt ratio is basically a debt ratio you qualify for. So. I'm not to say, you know, what, what where you should stop, you know, how much loan amount and so forth. That is up to you. My job is to help you get there. Um, but you can do credit uh, debt ratios on conventional loans. You can do a credit uh, or debt ratio up to 50%. I'll take that back. It's 49.99, actually. Uh, you can't exceed 50%. Okay. A lot of the other government programs like FHA and, and VA, you can go, believe it or not, to like 57%. 57% of a debt ratio. Now, would I suggest that? Probably not. But a lot of times somebody will qualify and they're, they're, they all have additional income. So we might you might get a debt ratio that's darn near 50%. Uh, but we know that you might have border income. You might have a part-time job we couldn't use. You might have a spouse that's not on the loan. So those might help you, you know, qualify for those programs. But 740 credit score, don't exceed a 50% debt ratio. You should be good. So the next question. So thanks, thanks, uh, Janet, for the question there. We we got a lot of them. So if I double dip on some of these, uh, please be leery. Uh, what do we got here? Dude, you don't have to do that. That guy, Ray, super stickers. Thanks, man. You don't have to do that. You join me all the time. So if I see you come up, don't, don't, don't spend any money. I'll pull you right up to the top. If you guys are regulars, I'll answer your questions because you guys are supporting the team. All right. So uh, don't doing a first bump to US. Super sticker US. Hands uh, doing a flip. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so I didn't understand what that exact said. So thanks for joining me, man. Uh, let's go through here again. Bear with me. I'm going to try to get through. We got Janet's question. Uh, Louisville, Kentucky. We have Travis. 
um, with Beastie Podcast. So thank, if you guys are YouTubers out there or you have a podcast that you'd like to join me, you know, on a, on a something or whatever, I'd love to collaborate on some things. So I'm always reaching out to people to collaborate. A lot of people don't reach out to me. I, I don't know why. Maybe you just don't like me, but you, unfortunately what you see here is what you get in real life. So this is how I am in real life, believe it or not. I'm pretty hyper. Um, and I always, you know, if you ask me a question, I really will go in detail to answer those questions because the one thing I, I try to pride myself on is not, you know, if you apply for a loan, I say, yeah, we can't help you. I try to explain the whys. Okay. Why can we get you in a position? Can we help you with your credit? Can you help you with your student loans? Can we help you with this to get you to where you need to be other than just click and you're done. Okay. So chilling from Louisiana. Louisville, uh, the guy, that guy, thank you, thank you, thank you. Unusual. Could you take a bit? Let's see what we got here. Could you talk a bit about where you see the housing market headed going into 2023, especially with rate hikes today? Okay, so I hate giving predictions, and I'm going to put, I'm actually putting together a round table, a real estate round table. It's going to be me, Kyle. We're trying to get other high profile, actually, high profile YouTubers on here with us. You'll probably know most of the people that are sitting on that round table. I'm trying to hold off my predictions for that. But let me just give you my, let me give you what I thought was going to happen in 2022, and I missed uh, a good amount of it. And, and I won't explain to you why, though. Um, I predicted that housing, the house prices would go up about 5% for this year. I missed it. A lot of houses are up 10 or 12% right now. So that's a good miss. Where I missed was in this area, mortgage rates. Okay, I didn't in my wildest dreams ever predict that rates would hit you know, pretty much 7%. So the Federal Reserve is in so much control these days that uh, it's kind of it's kind of scary. Okay, so you could see when they talk, the markets rally like yesterday, or I think, yeah, yesterday, the consumer price index came out, consumer inflation, it came out. And it came in just a hair shy, but it's starting to come back down. And we saw the stock market rally about a thousand points. By the end of the day, it was zero. Okay. Mortgage rates got much better by the end of the day where they were zero. Um, so the Federal Reserve has way too much control over all the markets. Uh, and that's the scary thing. So let me, my predictions for 2023 is I, I basically think the, the housing market overall, and I'll talk in generalities, is going to be flat. Okay, so there's some markets that are going to get, I won't say killed, but they're going to get get a, a pretty substantial hit. And you can just go through the top 10 cities in the whole country that saw, you know, 30% appreciation or 40% appreciation in the last two years. They might give up half of that. Okay, but a lot of areas didn't see huge gains. You know, some did, some didn't. We start, we're starting to see those moderate. So I'm expecting basically 2023 to be flat. Okay, flat, maybe up a couple percent. I'm not on the on the bandwagon of there's going to crash. OK, one of the other reasons for, excuse me, for that foreclosures, people have equity. Why does somebody get go into foreclosure is because they're behind on their mortgage. They can't afford it. And there's no equity. Uh, so that's where, you know, I'm, I'm not expecting really the markets. Specific areas are going to going to have really hard times. But in generalities, you, you shouldn't really have that much of a hard time um, uh, getting a getting a mortgage. Um, so or. or you know what I'm getting with that. So that's what I'm sp specifically looking at there. I thought rates were going to be about five and a half. I'm still predicting that. Where I missed that a little bit is the Federal Reserve. I, I knew the Federal Reserve inflation was going to run its, you know, bring up its ugly head. And you can check out my videos from last year. And I was adamant about that. But what I missed, and I can't believe I missed this, is remember when there was quantitative easing? Okay, the, the, federal, the federal Reserve was out there buying mortgage-backed securities up driving artificially down mortgage rates. Well, they're not doing that anymore. Actually, in fact, they're selling. So that's going to drive up rates alone there. And then they're on the, in the same route, they're increasing rates. So we're having a double whammy. So rates went up about to seven. I think we're going to, they're starting to peter out from there. They're going to start to come back in mid-year, probably within the next six months, we should back, see back in the fives, the five and a half range. And I see that projections basically through 2023. I don't see a huge appreciation in housing. I see some markets maybe being down 10 or 20%. Why I don't think of that or call that a crash, I feel a crash is 50% or more. Where did I get that number? Well, the Great Depression. When the, when the stock market crashed, that's what it was down. I think it was down 60% or more. So I anticipate a crash at 50% or more. That's me. So giving back 20% when you're up 50% in the last two years isn't a crash. It's just getting back to this kind of normal 
normalcy. So sorry, I elaborated on that, but I'm going to try to keep getting uh, back through here. And then, oh, she answered. So thanks, Michelle, the FICO 8. Thank you so much. So you might, are you an underwriter? Let me know down below, because I know we have underwriters here and, you know, other kind of people. So kudos to that. It's so expensive in Washington, and I'm kind of stressed out about the interest rate. It's hard for first-time home buyers to get the house they want. I, I get it. What you, what you have to focus in on is kind of like what Kyle, you know, talks about a lot, is he says, um, you know what, hold on. I think I got a guest coming, trying to get in. Right, not just yet. I think it was a, that was a false alarm. So what Kyle always says is, here's, here's what you want to do. You want to make sure that you have, you can afford the payment. That's, that's number one and, and foremost. Hold on one second. I apologize about this guys. I I'm trying to get the, uh, our other party in here. Yeah, I got this. I just have to send them a read link to link back up. Um, I get it. But what you have to focus in on is try to find a house that's, that's affordable. I know that might be really hard, but what I don't want you to do is go out there and just do some wild financing programs to buy down the rate short term or do this or do that. Unless you really know that your income is going to come back. I'm still a huge proponent and some people make fun of this. It's like, well, you you marry the house and date the, the rate or something like that. I kind of get it, but I don't want to use that analogy. I'm just saying, and I, I back up what Kyle says. If you're looking to buy a house and you really would like to buy a house, maybe you don't buy that the ultimate house first. Maybe you buy a little condo, a little starter house. Like my son moved. We have a pretty nice size house where we live here. My son moved out. He's down the street. And he always he always laughs about it. He's like, Dad, you're, you're, my garage, your garage is the size of my house, but it's a starter house. He's already probably has 50000 in equity on that. Um, and he's doing fantastic. And he bought about a year and two years ago. So he's up in equity. He's got a rate at 2.625 on a 30-year fix. He's doing fantastic. So don't lose faith. You know, wait a little bit. You're going to probably see rates come down a little bit more. First of the year, you're going to start seeing housing prices. I don't know exactly where you are in Washington. If you're in the state of Washington or Washington, D.C., they're both really expensive. But just keep looking. You need to find a good realtor because there will be a needle in the haystack that you can find. But what I always, and, and again, I reiterate what Kyle says, make sure you can afford the payment, one and foremost. Make sure you have three to six months of reserves put aside. Make sure your job is pretty secure. We, we don't know. We don't know if we're going to wake up tomorrow. But make sure, you know, if, if your job is, they're starting to cut jobs and they're starting to lay off and things, I wouldn't go out there and buy a house because you don't know what there's, where that's taking you to. But if you're financially sound in those areas and you're still thinking, I don't, I don't know if I can afford that payment, Kyle always gives this recommendation. Keep paying your rent, but the difference in your rent and what your mortgage payment would be, throw that in a savings account that don't touch it. Don't touch it. And see if you can budget, if you can manage through life. That's the best advice I can give you. But I, I get it. Mortgage rates are, are sky high and home values are way up there as well. So, yep, unfortunately, it's just something we got to get through right now, but we'll get through it. The next question we got, and I don't mean to be rude, guys. I'm going to try to get through these because if you're on here, you want your question answered. I'm self-employed. How do I prove my income for the first year was 93000 and this year is 150 How do I prove my income? Well, it's pretty simple. You have to be in business at least two years, of, or I'll explain it this way. Two years worth of tax returns. Okay. I don't know why I'm looking up there when I usually, am, I'm on Kyle's channel. I'm always looking up at, I usually have a different camera going other than this junky thing. I, I'm just using my laptop right now. So that's why the video is so bad. <laughs> so my apologies. Um, Here's what, here's what you do. So the one thing I'll tell you to do is don't write off a ton, a ton of uh, income, you know, on, on you know, your self-employed side. So when you're self-employed, what you need to do is you have to provide two years of tax returns. Okay. What we do is we average the net income. So you might gross, like I have, I, and this is kind of a repeat of my afternoon video. I have a client right now we're working on their Uber driver. She's an Uber driver. And she grosses, grosses about $150,000 a year in Uber. But her net is about 50% of that because she owes money to Uber. She owes money to, like, she has, she writes off her car. She writes off her mileage. She writes off tolls. She writes off all this stuff. So then after you, you take your gross receipts, all the money you brought in for receipts, cost of goods sold, you minus all your expenses out, and that leaves you your net profit. That's what you qualify off of. So do you see when I say, don't write off everything, everything, everything. I know you want to bring your tax base down to zero, but you'll never buy a house. So 
That is what, ha what happens. That's how you qualify for self-employed. However, if you're in business over five years, in most cases, you can get away with one year of tax returns. So that's just a little caveat, just so you guys know out there that you are self-employed. So hopefully that answers your question for you. We have we have somebody coming in from Detroit, Michigan. Ali, welcome. Love to have you. Uh, let's see what we got here. I'm just going to click through these. Josie, easy, simple, six to 12 month bank statement loans as long as your credit score is, is that. Cool. So Buffalo Bobby might be a loan officer. So there's a lot of loan programs out there, guys. And that's why it's virtually impossible for us to teach you everything online. That's why we always ask you, Kyle and myself, we're like, if you're in the process of buying a house, please, we're your mortgage consultant, okay? We are a mortgage company, believe it or not, that's what we do. Kyle and I try to educate people out there, but when you're in need of a mortgage, let us know. I'll take the blame. If you've been trying to reach out to Kyle in the last couple weeks, we moved and his the, the success from his channel is overwhelming. So I am staffing up his team as we speak. But if you use that number down below, you will get somebody. And many times, if you if we get overwhelmed, you might even be getting a call from me because we're all working behind the scenes right now to get caught up on all of Kyle's uh, clients. So you got to remember, Kyle is he's a loan officer. He's a mortgage person. He is has a knack of teaching people this business. So I said to Kyle, hey, why don't you continue to do what you're doing? Educate the people out there. Explain to them. His websites are phenomenal. His technology is phenomenal. But where he he lacked was being able to have a, a, a team behind him to support or help his, his viewers, his subscribers. That's what we're doing. So we are here as Kyle's team, I'll put it that way, to help you guys out there. If you're looking to buy a house in 2023, that's what we're here for. Okay. So thanks for that comment. Uh, Buffalo, I appreciate you your, your helping me on this one. We'll go to the next one. And I'm just going to click through. I'm not even pre-reading notes. Give us your thoughts about mortgage interest rates for the next two years. I have no idea. Um, here, and here's why. I, it's not just me. I've done videos, and I'm trying to find a, some specific videos that I have. The Federal Reserve came out about a year, just a, about a year and a half ago. And they said, we will not be increasing rates until at least, at least 2023. That was from the Federal Reserve. So they botched it. They've increased rates. I think six times this year for over four and a quarter, maybe four and a half in interest rates. It's unheard of. It's never happened in history. So I, I don't know where they're going. What I can say is, you know, like I'll, I'll reiterate back to it. If you can afford the house that you can find, you know, compare it also to rents. You know, can you buy a house for the same amount as you can rent? If it's substantially lower to rent, rent, save a little money, fix your credit, work on those things. Uh, but if not, then you know, if you want to really look into buying a house, let us know. We'll, we'll, we'll answer all the questions that you have. We'll go over all the programs that you have. If you don't have money for a down payment, we got down payment assistance programs. We have bank statement programs. We have DSCR programs for investors. We have a ton of products. We just need you guys to reach out to us when you need help to buy that first house. So I, I apologize. I don't know the answer. I'm thinking rates in 2023 will be about five and a half percent. I'm pretty much expecting that to be the, the long duration. That's that's kind of the norm where we we kind of should be uh, based on a lot of the, 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 the technicals on Wall Street. OK, so let's go to the next one we got is do first time home buyers want any assistance with do first time home buyers get any you can get assistance yes so there's programs so for first time home buyers here's what you're looking at there is programs out there with 3% down so let me go through all the gamut let me just go through real quick if you you're a veteran god bless you i don't know if you realize you should you can buy a house with zero down no money down and you have no pmi and that could save you 1 2 300 bucks a month okay so va loans if you're a veteran or a spouse of a veteran 0% down you might be in an area where you don't even realize you can qualify for a USDA loan. Yeah, it's not a farm loan, not a farm. I did my first one probably about six, seven years ago. It might be probably even longer than that. You know, it was a condominium about 50 miles west of Chicago. And I'm thinking, I looked it up just for just for kicks. I looked up the address. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. It's a condo. It was a town in Sycamore, Illinois that qualified for a USDA loan. And they bought it with no money down. Okay, so those are two programs to look into, especially if you don't have any money. If you have some money, the conventional loan, if you have a credit score of 700 or more, you don't have to have 700, but that's usually the sweet spot to get the best rate. 
700 or more, you need 3% down. We have programs to get you that 3% down. Now, there's a lot of catches with these things. So most, most cities, states, and counties do have some down payment assistance programs. Most of them, to be honest with you, I'll use the language I usually use, so I apologize now. Most of the programs suck. Uh, what we try to do is get you into one or two of the one, we're, our, our goal is to get you into a down payment assistance program with no no repercussions. You walk out of the closing, free money. You don't have to you don't have to worry about it as being a lien, a mortgage on your property, any other payments. That's our number one priority. So if we can get you into that program, kudos. If we can't get you into that program because of some reasons, there are other ones we can fall back on. Those other ones are in most cases are pretty bad. OK, so we'll explain that to you. We'll, we'll explain the repercussions that you have going into that program. A lot of times what we ask you is say, well, do you have a retirement account? Does mom and dad, how about can we get five grand from mom and dad? Ask them. They might help you out and then just pay mom and dad back over time. Or maybe they'll just say, "Ah, just keep it. Maybe that's a good way to get five grand from mom and dad. Um, many times that's a very much a cheaper and more efficient way to go. So we'll kind of help you explore every avenue that you have so you can think and say, oh, I never thought of that. You know, a lot of people don't know that, you know, their 401k, you can use most of the 401k, your 401k money, you can take it out as a loan, a loan. Don't take it out as a lump sum because you're going to be taxed. You can take it out as a loan and use that as your down payment. And then you pay it back, but virtually you're just paying back yourself. So that might be another way to go. So these are all ideas we can come up uh, we can try to come up for you to help you get into a property when you're looking to do that. The next one we have is Nightbot. Want a free quote from Kyle's team? Oh, that's Kyle has bots popping up. So cool, Kyle. So just click there. But remember, we are a lender. Okay, so we're the mortgage company. So when you call us, you're talking to we we have you know processors and we can talk to underwriters and everything. So if you have a really weird situation, like I had one uh, about two weeks ago, a young man called us and they. He was trying to help his sister and uh, a friend buy a, buy a property and they were running into a lot of problems. But then they finally got, they called someplace and they got a pre-approval like, like that. And then he called and he, we're talking to him and I'm like, man, that's a more complex situation than I thought. So I actually took uh, his application, sent it to five different lenders because we're actually, a, consider us a broker. We're set up with 85 of the country's largest banks and mortgage companies. Okay. So I sent it out to five lenders. What happened? Four of them turned it down. So the company that he got pre-approved with within minutes, I don't know if it's going to work. It took me five submissions to get him approved. Okay. So those are the things I don't, the last thing we want to do is send you down a path to a dead end road. So we might do our due diligence and it might take us a week or maybe a little bit more than that. But when we issue that pre-approval, we'll stand by it and we can close on that. So that those are one areas where if you get a pre-approval and your, your scenario is a little bit complex, be careful if you get a pre-approval in like two minutes, because a lot of the automated systems don't know a lot of the, 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 just the nuances behind, kind of behind the scenes. Okay. So let's go to the next one. We got eccentric. Will Lou, Los Angeles finally get hit? Uh, yeah. You know what? Um, I just did a video this afternoon showing all the areas. If you guys go to Zillow, for those, anybody out there that are really interested in checking to see how the markets are doing in specific areas, go to Zillow, just Zillow.com. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and hit research. Okay, it's hard to find, but hit research, and then it's going to come up to another page. On that page, you're going to hit uh, data. And that data, there's a whole slew of information you can look at. You can see month over month appreciation in areas, uh, year over year. You, it drives down a lot of the data. You're seeing, I use that all the time because I keep trying to figure out you know, a lot of people are saying we're having a major crash. There's a lot of YouTube channels that are just pivoting around crash, 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 crash. And people keep asking me, I had several comments today is Dan, when's the crash? And I'm like, I don't know, because I'm not predicting a crash. Everybody else is. So I don't know. I don't know when the crash is going to be. And I don't, I'm not even predicting one myself. So I'll leave it at that. The next question that we have is I'm a high producing lender myself. And I think you're living in La La Land. If you think housing uh, and appreciating next year, you will see negative. Stop manipulating people. Well, I'm sorry you hear the, you, to hear that, bu uh, Buffalo, but if that's your take, God bless you. The, the cool thing about all this is, is we can have our opinions, but what I always try to pe put people's feet to the fire is, why, you know, I, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to debate you on this channel. If you want to call me, I'd love to talk uh, because I'm, I'm really, I, I love different opinions. 
things. And I don't get angry at people and like, you know, I'm not going to call you la la land and manipulating people and all that because you don't know the market's going to crash. You don't. Because like I said, let, let's use this analogy and I'll, then I'll move on to the next question. If the Fed came in in January and said, oh boy, we, over, we way overdid this. We way overdid it. We're going to start buying back mortgage-backed securities and we're going to, our plan is to get the rates back to two, two and a half percent on a 30-year fixed. Do you think the markets would crash? Probably not. Okay, so there's a lot of factors. You can't just say, well, the market's going to crash. You're in a lot of the land. You don't know what you're talking about because, you know, you don't even know. I don't know, you know, what the markets are going to do tomorrow. But, you know, and then to, to say, you know, every area is going to crash. Well, I'm from a small town in West Virginia that, you know, houses are, you know, there might be 10% higher than where they were a year or two ago, but there's, it's steady value. It's steady, steady, steady. You know, you go to areas such as Los Angeles and, and Austin, Texas, and things like that, that had huge run-ups, huge run-ups, Boise, Idaho, huge run-ups. Yeah, they're going to see 20, 25, maybe 30% correction, maybe 40. But you have in the most areas, you're not going to see a major crash. I'm not predicting it. And I explained in my videos, uh, tons of videos on why. So if you have your opinions, kudos to you. And I greatly appreciate you joining us, even if you have a contrarian view than me. Hopefully you can learn something and, and post comments. But what I'd ask you to do is please don't call me out. I mean, you can call me out, but I'd love to have a conversation with you on the side if you'd like. But uh, that's how I do it. So let's see the next one it is eccentric. Los Angeles real estate is still high. Okay. So this that just contradicted some things. Okay. So uh, let's get on to do first time home buyers get any assistance with conventional loans? You can. Okay. The one of the assistance pieces of the, of the puzzle is a lot of times it, it takes or you need 5% down or so forth. So conventional finance came out a few years ago with 3% down. So you only need 3% down. Other than that, you got to you got to think of it. Lenders want you to have skin in the game. What I mean by that is they want you to have some money in the game so you can't just buy a house and if it doesn't work out for you, just leave and stick it on the lender, okay? Because as a lender, I'm not a lender, I'm a broker, um, but we don't want your house, okay? So that's why we prudently try to underwrite you and help and assist you making this decision, especially if it's your first house, giving you things that you're not maybe thinking of because we're not trying to talk you out of this. We just want you to think before you make that leap. OK, so um, so there's not there is you can get down payment assistance programs. We have those to help you if you don't have the three percent down. Uh, and those also you can do that with FHA loans as well. So great question there. Uh, the next one. And you can see I'm not filtering any of these. If you have something that you want to come back at me at, God bless you. I'll be I, I've got thick skin and I'll take it. And I love the comments. I'm about to close in two weeks, but lender are still asking for further job employments. What the heck? These are areas where. A lot of this due diligence should have been done up front because if, if you're telling me they're still waiting for job employment numbers and everything, there's a question on your income. Okay, so if you're salaried and you get that, you know, check if you make a hundred grand and it, you know, it's divvied out every month, you get whatever that number would be, eight thousand or whatever a month, or you're not making a hundred grand, but you know what I'm saying. If you get a steady paycheck all the time, you've been at, work, at the same job for three, four, five, seven years. Mm, there's really not that much to do. So uh, when you're asking for further job employment, and, you know, when they're starting to dig in still, you might have some issues. And that was kind of the same thing that I was talking about when the, when the, I was trying to help that young man and his sister buy a house. They got that quick pre-approval. And I said, I, you know, I, I, God bless you. But I, the only way I'm going to issue you a pre-approval is if I, know, if I know I can get your loan done because I don't want this situation happening to me. We're, we're two weeks away from closing and I got to call you back and say, sorry, you know, I, I thought they would accept it, but they won't. So that's what you want to avoid. OK, so that's a perfect example of, you know, what happens in some of these areas. So, again, guys, I'm not filtering these. So please be nice when you're posting questions. Do you think that next year would be a good time to build? Uh, we own the land. We have plans in hand and looking to construction to perm central Florida. Yeah, you already own the land. Um, you. Uh, Raw materials, look at lumber prices. Lumber prices in June were 14. I don't know how they equated. I call them bundles. Lumber in June, you probably know this, in June was $1,400 a bundle. You know, it's $400 now, $400. It's, so it's you know multiples down. 
Um, the labor, the labor might be your your one of your biggest areas of concern. Other than that, most of your raw materials are way down. The tough thing on that part of it is it's the financing piece. Your financing uh, is going to be higher on rate wise, but there's nothing you can do about that. I mean, rates are what they are. But um, yeah, I, I would build. I own a property in in Florida. I'd love it. I you know, I'll probably be trying to accumulate a couple more down there uh, next year for investment property. So. Um, uh, that's where my, you know, I, I put my money, I guess, where my mouth is. And uh, I love it down there. I, I live in Chicago, but I own real estate in Florida and it's, it's fantastic. So, um, but that's that. So yes, I am probably a buyer too. So uh, next thing is we got Kanchana. Sorry if I butchered that. And are you in Hawaii or saying hi? My apologies. Uh, next one is, let's see what we got here. As long as you qualify on the note rate, a 1121 or a one note will help with their payment shock needing as long as you I, you might be answering a question to somebody i'm not sure but let me let me try to do this as long as you qualify on the note rate a 1121 or 10 buy down will help with that payment shock needing Okay, you, I think I, I kind of get with you. There's programs, with, what the person was trying to say is there are programs out there to kind of buy down the rate. So if you're looking to buy a property right now and the seller's pretty much motivated, these are where we really need realtors uh, on online to, to educate them. Here's what I would suggest. The two one buy down or the three, we even have a three two one buy down, believe it or not. What it does is let's let's just take it this way. Three two one. what does that mean? Well, for three years, you're gonna have a lower rate, okay? For let, let's go three, two, one. So in year one, you're going to have a rate that's 3% lower than your start rate. Year two, you're going to have a rate that's 2% lower than your start rate. In year three, you're going to have a rate that's 1% lower than your start rate. And in year four, you're going to be at your final rate. Okay. You qualify at that final rate. All right. So how this works is there's really no magic in this thing. What we do is we figure out how much interest you would have paid in year one what's the difference in the payment on, at the 6% rate that you're really approved at? And then the one that's 3% lower. So 3%. So what's the difference in that payment interest? How much interest difference? Okay. That's what we hold. So we hold that for 12 months. We that number. So let's say it's a difference of a hundred bucks. So it's gonna be $1,200 in savings a month, uh, for that year. Then in year two, you do it. So basically what you're doing in the long run, it, it's not, you're not saving any money, but you're going to save on your payment but we want the seller to pay it because if the seller doesn't pay it, all you're doing is prepaying your interest up front. So if you really want to find out more about this program, Kyle has some videos on this as well as I do, or call us and we'd love to explain to you kind of how that all works. Um, so that's that one. Next one is let's go through is these realtors always hype up loans that the majority of the population can never qualify for. Um, I don't know if you're, these realtors. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I'm a lender. I'm not a realtor. So I'm, I'm just trying to talk to you guys about, you know, different mortgage packages. The next thing we have is, are there any difference on how they calculate income for DSCRs? Yep. The DSCR is basically, it's simple. It's as simple as it can be. Here, here's, I submitted two of these today, believe it or not. Um, here's how it works. As long as the rent on the property covers the mortgage payment, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, and association fees if there is one. Okay. So let's say, for example, you have a, a, a building in Florida that you're renting out for two grand a month. So you can get a mortgage on that, a DSCR loan. And as long as that pay, mortgage payment is 2000 or less, you qualify. The payment you need is 620 credit score. You do need reserves. And it is normally about 80% financing, 75 to 80% financing. So again, you need skin in the game, but this helps where this DSCR program helps a lot is for those investors, like the one of the ones I submitted today, it is the person wanted to close in an LLC. He has about 15 rental properties. So his financial, and he owns a financial firm. So his finances are, are almost impossible to figure out. Uh, so because he wanted to close in the LLC, the financials are really difficult. I'm like, why don't we just do a DSCR? It, it, he only owed $100,000 on the property. It's worth much more. He's, he just wants it for cash flow. So I put it on a 40-year interest only term. Again, he wants cash flow. That's what he wanted. So we provided that to him. So I got him approval today. It's, a, it's a closing in an LLC. 
It's a 40 year term interest only. And you guys might say, Oh, that's that. Why are you ripping him off? Because he's going to pay interest forever. He doesn't care. He's like, I'm, 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 I have so much cash flow on this property. This is the product I want because no other product will allow me to close with just a lease and close in my company's name that's in mainstream. So that's why, that's why he got elected to do that. And that's why uh, several other people elected to do that. So if you're an investor out there, you got to know about the DSCR program. So check out, I know Kyle has videos on this as well as I do. So check out our YouTube channel or again, guys, just call down, call the number down below. We're here to help you guys. This isn't an infomercial. I'm here to answer your questions, but a lot of people don't understand what we do. Some people think Kyle's a realtor. Some people think Kyle might be just a financial person or whatever. He actually is in the mortgage business. Um, and he's here to help you guys transition from renting to buying. And that's the whole goal. And that's my goal as well. Um, let's see. No income calculated on DSCR. Correct. Again, as long as the, the house, the lease on the property or the rents from the property cover the mortgage payment, you're good to go. Um, let's see what else we got. Alex, what's the minimum down payment typically? On, I don't know. Oh, DSCR. Usually the one I'm doing today, is it's usually 20%. They'll go 80%. I, there might be some a little bit higher, but then uh, not much higher. So, Alex, thanks for joining us on here, buddy. Sergio, Sergio, let's see what Sergio has today. I have a 720 credit score and with 75,000 in income, and I'm looking for a three. Should I include my fiance? She makes same, but credit score is 630. Here's all I'll say on that is no. If, we, if, you, if, you do, if you can avoid it, if you qualify on your own, that's the way to go. Because in this case, your, your rate would be dependent on a 620, 630 credit score. Your score is going to be, or your, your interest rate is going to be horrendous, okay? Expect it to be at least one full percent higher than what you would get with a 720 credit score. So if you can qualify with just your income alone, that's the way to go. And that's how we consult with our clients. We're always saying, okay, let us, give us all, here's, here's my, what I always say. I, I talk with you for probably about a half hour. I get, I, I take meticulous notes. I've tried to figure out what are you, what exactly are you looking to do? So then I'm like, okay, so what I'm trying to do right there, I'm trying to gather all my pieces of the puzzle. And then from there, I'm like, let me put the puzzle together and then I'm gonna get back, back to you. There's no reason why I want to kind of put you, take you down a dead end road because you have to, you know, I'll, I'll be blunt. We make money when your loan closes. That's how we make, an, make a living. So there is no way in the world that I don't want your loan to close. OK, so we go through this and we try to explain to you, OK, if we did it with on your credit alone and you qualify, here's what we can get. If we add your wife, which we can do that, here's what you would get. So you decide, you tell me how you would want to do it. But if you're asking my opinion, I would take the lower rate. And then your, your wife is always going to we can we can put her on the deed at the closing. She's still going to own the property, um, but she doesn't have to be on the loan. So when you when you look at the ownership of a house, there's the mortgage. OK, and then there's the vested interest in the property. Just because you're you're you, you're not on the mortgage doesn't mean you don't own the property. OK, you're still an owner of the property. You're just not liable for the mortgage. OK, so that's the best way I can explain that part. All right. Next question we got is I love this is can you legally use money from a HELOC to purchase another property? In most cases, uh, you can. Um, but it will be factored in. We have we have to show that the money that you've taken out of the home equity loan that increased your balance over here. So we have to now factor in that new payment. Um, so that might be a way to get money for your down payment. But yes, you can do that. Um, some lenders, if you run into a situation where the lender is like, OK, you need to source and season this or whatever, take the money out of your home equity loan, put it in your bank account for 60 days and you'll be golden. So those are things that we can coach you on. Uh, depending on the program that you're looking into. All righty. So the next one is, let's see what we got here. Uh, what happens after you sign the closing disclosure? You own the house. Okay. I don't know what else to say there. Um, legally. I don't know what you mean by that. Um, sorry, guys. I'm trying to. Thanks for answering my question. You betcha. If you got more, please keep them posted. I'll stay on here as long. Normally, Kyle and I are on here about two hours. I don't know what happened to my credit analyst. He is. Let me let me check my emails real quick to see if there was any response back. Yeah, he for some reason he can't. He can't get in to the system. So uh, I can answer any any credit questions you have. I'll have to rebook him. I apologize. 
Uh, with, like I said, with Kyle coming down, we think he might have COVID. Uh, it's kind of throwing a monkey wrench into a little thing, a few things. So if you guys would go into Kyle's channel and just wish him, you know, good health, uh, he'll 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 actually get a kick out of that. The next question we have is: So is the FHFA rate discount in effect for conventional loans? I saw Kyle do a video in it, but I'm confused on whether it's actually a thing that's happening. In it. Yeah, it took it took effect on December first. <clears throat> what that is is I don't know if you know what it is, but basically is there, there's a there's a product out there for especially first time home buyers uh, that that's eligible what they did is remember we talked about credit scores how if your credit score is low like the one we just the question we just answered 620 versus a 740 if they're going into this program if they if their lenders and then they should be if they're going into the, the program that you're talking about then it would wipe out they wouldn't have that interest rate adjustment Okay, so remember I said, well, that rate's probably going to be one, one and a quarter percent higher than otherwise would be. Well, that's if you have an uneducated loan officer, because if you had an educated loan officer, they would try to fit you into this because it would save you over one full percent on your rate. So great question. And yes, it is in effect for first time home buyers. It's a little section of the market that's, you know, some some loan officers don't even know about probably. But it's a little, you know, section of the loans that we do that do qualify for these things, and it's it's a huge product. Don't know how long it's going to be around. So if you're in the process of trying to buy a house right now, you know, let us know. We'd love to help get you into that program. Uh, let's see what the next question is. Can you place a security camera outside a rental home before a tenant moves in? Don't know. Um, I don't know the legalities behind that. I don't see why you can't put a security camera in there and at least advise them it's there. So as long as they're forewarned, you're not really invading on their privacy. That's what I would do. I'd just say, I get security cameras around the house because for security purposes, are, are you okay with that? Just maybe even have them sign a little disclosure. And that should keep you there. Hey, he's here! Dude, what's up, Buster? Hey, I just talked to Oliver. He said he had a conversation with you earlier, and you, you did sound like you were down in the dumps. So thanks for having us. You might be able to chime in on some of these because... Um, your websites, a lot of the tools that you have on your websites can help a lot of these people. And I was just explaining too how you're kind of down in the dumps and some people might be not getting a hold of somebody or might not be getting phone calls back. That is my fault. I, Kyle has nothing to do with it. So what I'm trying in the process of doing right now is I'm going to assign more people over to Kyle's team to make sure you guys are getting called right back. And I will, if you do not get called back, uh, please email me, email Kyle. He can forward to me. I will personally take care of you. I promise. We don't want anybody falling through the cracks. Okay, that is my big thing here. I want the phones answered. If you don't get an answer, call back or email me, email Kyle. But this phone number, we are in the process of actually of porting our phone numbers right now, switching them over. So there's a lot of moving parts that we have right now. I apologize. I'm on it. I'm working on it. And I'm actually adding people to Kyle's team as we speak. And we're also working on a whole slew of things in the back end to help you guys make this whole uh, process a little bit easier and more transparent. So thanks, Kyle. Stay on here, buddy. I might need you. I needed. I need a like a moderator thing here because so far we haven't had any really bad uh, posts yet. I hope you feel better soon. Yeah, everybody post on here to say, hope you feel better, Kyle, or give him a thumbs up or just say hi. All right. So he's, he's, he's a trooper. He's trying to stick with us. So thanks again. Um, the next question, Kyle, you, you might, you, we don't even have to do a timer today, buddy. I'm just flying through these things. I think maybe it's you ramble too much. Okay. Regarding new construction homes, can you please explain how they can offer a permanent rate buy down and how it differs from non-permanent? The only thing I can say is, well, you can buy down the rate. So let's, here's how rates work. So let's say, for example, and this is where Kyle usually comes into play because he can pull up all his other screens and show you rates and everything else. But let me just say it this way. Let's say the going rate today is 6%. 6% is, is what we call par. OK, so that rate is the rate. If you want to uh, get a lower rate, you can actually pay a fee. That's called buying down the rate. OK, so that's how it works. It also works the same way reverse. So let's say, for example, you, you're short two thousand dollars of money to close. Well, what we could do, we could raise your rate a little bit. What that does is that creates more revenue on the loan. Now, we, that's how we make money. But we are legally bound to making X amount of money. So when we exceed that threshold, you get that money back. So let me let me make it sense this way. So if you have a rate, the par rate six percent, and you're like Dan, I want five point seven five. I might be like, well, it's going to cost you two grand to get that. 
But I might come back and say, well, you, you, you might be short to buy, to close on a house, two, three grand. I might come back and say, you know what? If I raise your rate to six and a quarter, that'll give us, that'll give you a $3,000 credit that you can use to help go toward those closing costs. Now you can close. We got enough money. So the rates can be manipulated up and down to make sure it fits. And that's how, but how the, how the, how the, uh, the construction companies are working, it's kind of unique, some of them. Okay, some of them. You gotta you gotta think some of these some of these builders, or a majority of them, own or own a big portion of the mortgage company. So what they do is they say, well, if you use our mortgage company, we'll actually help you buy down that rate. We'll give you ten thousand dollars in credits to buy it down. Well, what happens a lot of times on the construction side, their rates are artificially higher anyways, and they charge more fees because they know that they're giving you they're 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 telling you, well, we're going to give you 10 grand in credits. You can buy down your rate. You can pay off all your fees if you want. You can get a free loan. You can do whatever. So that's how they manipulate you because they are, most of the time, they're giving you a higher rate anyways, and they're charging you excess fees. I know because I know people that work in these companies and I talk to them, and they're, some of them are just like, dude, what we're doing is just bad, but it's a living. You know, I don't have any other choice. So I know this is going on. So, that's how they do it. So they're, they're like, I'll give you a $10,000 credit and we'll just use that to buy down your rate. Well, it's already at an artificially high rate in many cases. And sometimes it doesn't cost that much to buy down the rate. Sometimes it does. But that's how a lot of times the builders kind of manipulate these things uh, through the system. So fantastic question. Uh, thoughts on a 60 or 90 day lock uh, with banks? Uh, you know, he, here's, here's what we do. And I don't know, Abe, I don't know if you're a loan officer or what. We're actually, uh, I'm a federally chartered bank. So I'm part of First Ally, Allied First Bank. Okay, we're a federally chartered bank. That's what I. That's where I. What I do. Um, but we also we really broker out probably 99.9 percent of our loans. Okay, so we are also a huge brokerage. Okay, huge brokerage. Um, so how we do things is I always err on caution. So like yesterday, if you had a loan with us, we locked you because everybody keeps coming to me saying, "Hey, what's what's the Fed going to do? How's that going to affect rates? What's going on? Lock them. Lock them. Okay." It, it, why is because I'm a broker. I'm set up with 85 different companies. So if rates go down, I can just pull your loan file from here, withdraw it, and put it in over here and lock at that rate. If you go to a bank, and I'm not downplaying banks, I'm just, this is how it works. If you go to a bank and you lock, you're locked. Okay, my analogy is like stocks. When you're watching a stock, you're watching it, that's, you're watching it. But once you buy that stock, you own it. You own it. So if the next day the stock drops in value, you can't go back to your broker and say, oh, sorry, I didn't want this today. Can I buy it tomorrow or at the lower price? You can't. You already bought it. So that's why I have almost always have worked as a broker because I want that flexibility for you guys. So that's another fantastic question. Oh, uh, I think I just, thanks for the great information. You bet, Sergio. I am here to answer any questions you guys got. And Kyle bailed on me. So you guys might even want to start giving him the, de the down, the down arrow. Boo. Is there any way for Kyle himself to handle my mortgage application? I'm self-employed and it's going to take some creativity to get it done. I'm your guy. I've done this. Uh, not that Kyle can't do it. Kyle is awesome. But I'm the one that always breaks down the taxes and everything else. So I am the person you go to. I've done this for 33 years. I do all, the, if anybody's self-employed, any loan comes to our office is self-employed, I get those. And I know them, but I own several other companies. Uh, check out American Drum Supplies. I own that. It's a it's an industrial sales drum company. So I own multiple other companies. I know how to read taxes. I did get a weird tax return in in uh, yesterday. The people they're claiming that they're non-resident aliens. I, not I don't say claiming they are non-resident aliens, saying they really don't have to file taxes. So they file a tax return, but just with one number, how much that money they made, and that was about it. It was kind of weird, but it's allowed. Uh, so I can I would love to analyze your taxes with you. Uh, so if you're on here, my you can email Kyle. My email address is dan at the rateupdate.com. Okay, but you can even email Kyle. Kyle, if you're still on here, just forward those taxes to me. I'd be more than happy to go through those. That's what we do. I don't want to say, okay, here's you, you tell me you make 10 grand a month. Okay, good. Here's your pre-approval. I want to see this stuff because you'll thank us down the road because remember the comment we had just about six comments be before this, they said, well, we're two weeks away from closing and they're still messing with my job and you know, verification. That's what you want to avoid. 
Okay. So that's what we're trying to, to help you. So we got to get well soon, Kyle. So please post for Kyle on here. Give him a boo first for not being on here, but then wish him good luck. Okay. Does FHA loans, does FHA loan the largest debt to income ratio? My mother is on social security, but wants to buy a cheap house. Yes. Unless she's a veteran. Veterans can go to hmm, 60. I've gotten them done at like 65% debt ratios. Uh, if this is an investment property, probably not. She want, wants to buy a cheap house. Yeah. FHA would be the, the way to go uh, because when you go with a conventional loan with low scores in a low loan amount, it's the, the rate's probably going to be 10%. You probably wouldn't be able to close anyways. So with FHA loans, you can uh, use social security income. You can actually gross it up. So what happens is with your mom, I'll, I'll do this real quick for anybody that has social security income. When we're qualifying for a loan, we qualify it on your gross income. A gross income means your income before all they take everything out. Okay, so it's that top line. All right, that's what you use to qualify. But if you're on Social Security, you actually get a net check. So if they say you're gonna you you earn eighteen hundred bucks this month, you get eighteen hundred bucks less like Medicare. You can actually gross that number up. In some cases, one hundred fifteen percent. In other cases, one hundred twenty five percent. So if you would. Take your mother's Social Security benefits, multiply it by 125%, and that's basically how much income she would be using to qualify. So if you need help, please reach out to us. Call, email me, or you can even go online. Uh, but Kyle, I don't know if Kyle's on here. I want to post his information. But go to the rateupdate.com. That's my website. Uh, or Win the House You Love, and that's Kyle's website. You'll find a ton of information there that can help you. And please reach out to us. That's why we're here. So to answer your quick questions, but we can't really go into detail with you one-on-one -on -one here, love to do it behind the scenes. So if you need some help, please give us a call and uh, we'll, we'll make sure you're taken care of. I promise you. The next one is, what do we got here? What are the mortgage rates? They went up today. Well, you'd be surprised. They actually had a reversal. Um, you got to watch what you're looking at because Mortgage News Daily has, sometimes they, they have a lag. My hair looks like it's just stuck to my head. I put a gook in my hair. Um, Mortgage News Daily posted, I don't know where you got your rates, um, but the, what happened right at the beginning or right when the Federal Reserve announced what they're going to do, actually mortgage rates, the MBS market, I talk of the MBS market, and then let me put it in the context for you. The MBS market was, was flat, and then all of a sudden it just plummeted. It was down like 30 or 40 points. As the MBS market, let me just explain to it, it's a mortgage-backed security market. It's a bond that trades on Wall Street. When that bond price goes down, there's an inverse relationship or a flip-flop relationship. Mortgage rates go up, okay? So that's how it all works. So today, actually, when the Federal Reserve said what they're going to do, we went from uh, basically flat to minus 30. By the end of the day, that chart was up, I think, seven. So mortgage rates actually shouldn't have changed at all today. You might see some websites saying, you know, they just didn't update. But overall, mortgage rates should have been basically flat. Uh, from the beginning, from where we closed last night to where we closed tonight. So good call there. But yeah, just watch where you're checking out some of these rates and, um, you know, just do, be careful there. I'm located in California and I don't get how regular people can afford to buy right now. Home prices average. I, I know. And that's, I'm glad I, I, I had a, uh, an, an offer to move to, to California about 15 years ago in the mortgage business. And I'm glad I didn't. I'd never be able to afford it. I can't afford what the mortgage payments would, would uh, be like only with 3%. I, I can't imagine either. So I, I don't know. Unfortunately, that's you, you live in that area and it's just, it's brutal. Um, I live in, in the Chicagoland area where we were, we're stuck here. It's not house values per se. It's our taxes, our real estate taxes. Um, most of the states out there other than New Jersey have pretty, pretty reasonable taxes. Our taxes in Illinois are stupid. You know, um, mine, and I don't even have a huge house, but mine are probably over a thousand dollars a month. Okay. So our taxes in Illinois are stupid. That's why I'm, I'm hoping to get to, I own property in Florida and I'm hoping to get down there probably in the next couple of years and start taking a little bit easy and hand these reins over to Kyle and his team and those guys over there. So, um, but it, great, great analogy. I get it. I feel for you. But and there's nothing I can do, unfortunately. Uh, the next thing, I apologize for the fogginess and everything, guys. I'm I'm just on my laptop, uh, my my laptop webcam. So my my apologies. Honest opinion on the on the back back of America 1700. Would you happen to know what house qualify? I I don't. 
Um, I'll look into that. The Bank of America's seventeen thousand five hundred dollar grant. Please be, please be careful. I know Bank. I think wasn't it Bank of America recently came out with that thing that the rate's going to be like nothing or something like that. Then you look into it, and even it makes no sense. So I was, I would always be careful with Bank of America and a couple of those bigger banks because they always come up with some scheme. And I think sometimes it's just out there to make it look good for the public or something. But oh, we'll look into that, I promise you. And I'll put that down to address at our next uh, live event. I don't know if we're going to have one next week because we're getting closer to the holiday. I'm expecting we are, but um, you never know. But I, I'll, hopefully next week we, we are live. If we are, join us and we will answer this uh, question for you. B of A, $15,000, $17,000 grant. I'll find out for you on that and I'll give you my honest, truly honest opinion. Or I may even do a video about it. So stay tuned. Check out my channel. And if you haven't, you guys are coming from Kyle's channel, check out my channel. Uh, subscribe to it. Love to have you on there. Um, and hopefully you get my my videos are a little different than his. Mine are more like economics. I talk on mortgage rates, programs, payments, what the economy is doing and all that to give you guys a direction on where rates are going. I don't know where house prices are going. Well, we know they went up and so forth. But I really want to give you guys a beat on where rates are, the affordability of things, and trying to you know maneuver through the financing part of the equation. So that's what that's what I really strive to do. Uh, does a co-signer who isn't a first-time home buyer take away my first-time home buyer status? FHA, you know what I? Yes, you you know you cannot do it. No, no applicants involved can be both. All the applicants have to be first-time home buyers. Now there is caveats to that. A lot of the times, the first, if you dig into the guidelines with the first-time homebuyer program, you cannot have owned a house for the last three years. So that doesn't mean you actually have, have to be your first house ever. It just you cannot have been on, invested in a property in the last three years. Okay, so hopefully that answered that question. Go to the next one. We're cooking through these tonight. The Bank of America program is a joke. It's fairly income based, which means a low. Oh, I remember that one you're talking about. It is the one I did a video on. It's a joke. It is a joke. I have a buddy, uh, Sir Ashley. He's a realtor down in the Carolinas. And I talked with him right after that because he did a video and he he blew that thing up. So I apologize. I, that That is the the, the uh, program that you're talking about. Yeah, it's it's a joke. It's I think it's just kind of a smoke screen for them to say to the government here. See, we're trying to help people. Uh, hello, Kyle. Feel better. Everybody tell Kyle, hey, Kyle, feel better. I wish there was a way I can kind of move my screen around, see all you guys, and we can kind of wave to them. Um, let's see what's this. Just got over the gun myself. Hope <laughs> you feel better, Kyle. I, my daughter, I came home last night. Kyle, I'll let you know this. My throat was hurting like crazy. I had the chills, everything. I took a bunch of hauls. And then my, my brother in law is a doctor. And he said, you know, take echinacea and NyQuil. You know, so when I say, or Dayquil in the day. So if you start to feel pretty shitty, take Echinacea. And I don't know. And then take NyQuil at night and Dayquil during the day. I usually do it for two or three days and I feel fine. It's it's like a miracle cure for me. So go out there and buy Echinacea and start taking that. But um, Kyle, for the quick recovery, let's see the next one. Hello, my mom co-signed my second house conventional loan. Can she purchase a home and get first time? She cannot. She cannot. Because she's been vested. She, there's a whole bunch of things behind the scene, guys, that we can find out about you that you don't know. Uh, it's kind of scary. You know, we can go out there and find. There, there's a there's reports that the lenders do pull on you. So every once in a while, we'll get kind of a, a blindsided. And they'll say, well, this person has, you know, they own two other homes here. And they have this also as a judgment or whatever. And it's like, what are you talking about? And then we talk to the clients. And it's like, oh, yeah, but I, I that house is free and clear. So I didn't even put it on my application. I'm like. Well, you got to because it says all your, you know, all the real estate you own. So, but yes, unfortunately, it would disqualify for her from that program. But there might be other options for it. And we'd love to help you with that. So remember, either check out Kyle's website, give Kyle's a call or my, our main line. We're, we're all on the same team. So it doesn't matter if you end up going with Kyle, that, that file is going to come process and, and come through my desk anyways, because I review most of these, especially the tax returns for those out there that really have some complex taxes. So. Um, that's that one. The next one is, hello, my mom. Cosine. Oh, that's in Reading, Pennsylvania. Hey, I'm from West, uh, the West Virginia area originally. So hi from hi to Reading, Pennsylvania. If you get the FHFA rate discount, can you further buy down the rate? I'm looking to buy a home. I've been renting for 13 years. And I'm confident I can get the landlord to buy down my rate. Yeah, you can. Yes. So whatever that start rate is. So let's say the going rate six, but you want to buy it down to five and a half. 
Well, now that 321, remember, reach out to us for the 321, especially if you have a landlord or a builder paying for it. It's going to give you one more year of a reprieve. So what you do is you take, you buy down, but wherever that rate ends, you got to remember the first year with our program, you're going to be 3% lower. The second year, you're going to be 2% lower. And the final year, you're going to be 1% lower. And hopefully we can calculate. Kyle has a calculator on there. Kyle, if you're still here, if you can pop it on the screen. Um, but it's, I forget what it, exactly it is, but go to Kyle's websites and you, you should be able to find it on there. There's a, he has a, a three, two, one or a two, one buy down. And I think it's probably cut when the house you love backslash buy down. Check that out. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Dan family trust are purchasing some of the houses in California. BRA <laughs> BFA <ours> sucks. <laughs> so family trust are purchasing some of the houses in California. There's a lot of, so a lot of, there's a lot of investors, believe it or not, still buying. You know, I talked to a guy, he's looking to buy five houses right now in Florida. So, you know, there's a lot of people on the fence right now, but there's still values in areas, believe it or not. And, and a lot of people look long term. So if you, you, you know, if you bought a house last year and you got a good rate and everything, 10 years from now, you're going to look back saying, oh my God, I don't believe I did that. If you sat on the sideline for two, three more years, you're going to sit back and look back and say, why didn't I do that? So, but I'm not... I don't want you to feel like you got to buy a house. It might not be right for you, but if you can and you're not, what you've seen over the last year, you, you kind of, uh, I'll leave it at that. So you know my opinions on that, but some people just can't buy. I mean, I get it. Want a free quote? Here's Kyle's bot again. There it is. So he keeps putting up things. So go there. We would love to help you. Remember, Kyle's a lender. I'm a lender. So when we, we ever, every once in a while, we get out there saying, you know, hey, I'm looking to buy a house in North Carolina. Do you know any good lenders? That's what we do. Okay. <laughs> uh, next thing is we got, I got, this is awesome. Awesome. I'm glad you didn't say awful. I thought at first, I, that's what I thought you said at first. And I'm like, why is it awful? Okay. The next one is, I got a hairdo going on tonight. Wells Fargo is giving me the best rate on 30 year fix. You think you can beat it? They're claiming to lock 90 days prior to escrow date, adjusting the rate down should it go down in the next 90 days. Send me so we have a loan estimate uh, calculator. So here's what I'll ask you to do: write down my write down my email address. I might be able to. I don't know how to do it on this. My email address is dan like dan d a n at therateupdate.com. Okay. What I want you to do is send me your loan estimate or whatever they gave you. I, I I'll get back with you tomorrow. I'll run you through our system. All I need to know from you is what your credit score is because the loan estimate that you have isn't going to have your credit score on there. So if you can email me a copy of your loan estimate, um, I'll review that, but I do need your credit score. And I'll, I'll do a quick little video and get back with you tomorrow telling you exactly what I can or can't do and if we can beat them and, and where. So I'd love to do that for you. Please don't forget to send me that email. You can even send it tonight, but I won't be working on it till in the morning because I'm in Chicago and it's by the time I get off of here, it's probably going to be seven o'clock and it's going to be dinner time. Uh, the next question is, what do we got here? Does the same 115% growth to pensions as well? Yes. Well, only if it's a state entity or you're non-taxed. So let's say, for example, like in Illinois, there's a lot of railroad workers that don't pay uh, federal taxes. But you didn't know that. Well, we can add back 115% of their pay. But if you're on Social Security or any other uh, income that is not taxed, okay, if it's not taxed, then yes, we can gross up that, that, that income. Uh, my co-signer makes 54000 a year in retirement income. Again, is it taxed or is it not taxed? So those are the things that we could we could help work with you or help guide you through. So again, these are, I'd love to just answer quick questions on here, but if you really want to dig in deep, call us. Trust me, we, we will be able to help you. And if you get a loan officer, you get, uh, you, you get stumped maybe or whatever, I'll be calling you. OK, so I can promise you, you, you won't fall through the cracks. I'm in California currently purchasing a three bedroom condo for one point six million dollars. Wow. I was reading that only 16 percent of Californians can buy the average home. Yikes. You're, you're right. Um, you're right. So I don't even know how to answer that one. A three bedroom for one point six million. Wow. That's all I got to say. Uh, next question is, sorry, buying for one point two. That's better. And still, God bless you. That's all I got to say. Hopefully, and you're, you're blessed in your life uh, that you can do these things. Um, you know, not that money is blessings, but hopefully you were you were you know you, you were repaid your your deeds. You're doing great, Doug. Hey, hey, thanks. 
<laughs> Kat is our our uh, Kyle and Mai's assistant. She's fantastic. I'm grad. Uh, if I graduated from community college with an associate's degree in computer science and found a job at Southern, can I use the year? my years in college as work is you don't need if you're a new graduate out of college believe it or not there's sometimes we can even get you closed with still an offer letter that's usually not you know very common but yeah if you come out of school all we need is your transcripts and 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 things just to prove that you did graduate you can get basically a, a new job get your first paycheck we'll get you into a house so that sounds like an infomercial somebody said last time they're like Dan, Kyle, you guys sound like an infomercial. Well, you know, it was it was based on a comment somebody said, you know, you know a good lender I can reach out to. I'm like, dude, really? We're a lender. So I don't know. I really appreciate you doing these lives. Uh, a lot of guys, you're, you're welcome. And thanks, thanks. We couldn't do the lives if you guys weren't here. So that my biggest fear when I do these things is I go on here and like when I came on tonight, I clicked it on and there was zero people on for like the first four minutes. And I'm like, ah, oh, jeez. So, but if it wasn't for you guys, we, we couldn't do it. Uh, I really appreciate you doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what's the highest DTI on, on FHA? 57. FD 56.99. Uh, that's that's where they'll go to. So it, it's it's crazy. Don't shoot the messenger, but that's as high. That's where that's where you can get done. Uh, next question. I'm starting to lose track. Man, there are a lot of questions. I'm, I'm trying, guys. Uh, there it is. Kyle just posted this. So th thanks for that, Kyle. Buy downs. There it is. So the person that was looking for the three, two, one buy down, go to winthehouseyoulove.com backslash buy down. You can figure it out right there. And again, if you want to talk to somebody about it, those that ask for, you know, can you deal with Kyle directly? Kyle's a busy guy. I mean, he is, I try to get him half the days and he's over here. He's working on projects. He's working on websites. He's working. He's actually helping me create a, a new CRM system in a, a, a basically a, a whole new system internally because this is going to affect him huge as well. And we're going to start pivoting a lot of, a lot of this around Kyle uh, as well. So we're going to have new CRMs, new phone systems and everything. So you guys, when you do need help, we're there for you. Um, what is the best way to reach you? Also self-employed have been in business almost five years in concerns, getting approved, approval to construction, the perm seven, best way to get a hold of me. I, I would probably deal with you personally on this one. Email me. My email address is Dan. I don't know how to change this. I can probably put it in comments. Let me see if I can put a comment. I don't think I can. My email address is dan at, and then my website is theratedupdate.com. So dan at theratedupdate.com. Please email me there. Uh, give me the best contact information for you. You can even click click on my, uh, well, you can't do that. Just, just email me. Give me a good time and phone number. I can call you tomorrow. I'd be more than happy to do that. Uh, next question is, hey, Dan, been watching your channel for a while. Now on the journey to buy my first house. I truly appreciate what you're doing. My current situation is I make 10000 a month. God bless you. I would love to help you. So please give me, you can even call that number, guys. I probably won't be the one answering it, but it'll be you know somebody on my staff. Just ask them, you know, say, is, is Dan available? If I'm not available, I promise you, I'll call you back as soon as I can. I, I, I go the whole day and I don't have any calls that I miss throughout the day that I don't get back to. All right. So the next thing is, let's see what this one is. My wife and I are considering leaving California for a more affordable state. Yeah, we just saw a three bedroom come in for 1.2 million. My wife gets to get gets to keep her California employment and work remotely. I, however, just found new employment. Okay, is there more to that? Um, hold on. You might have. Let's see if you added to that. I don't know if you added to that. So bear with me a second. Nope. Let me see if you posted the second one. That might be it. Bear with me, folks. I'm sorry. Don Draper. No, it's a different person. Uh, let's go back to Don. So Don, um, however, I find new. <clears throat> I just found found new employment. So here, let me let me help you with this. As long as here here's what I was kind of trying to steer you to help you. As long as it's in the same line of work and you don't have any big job gaps, like one, two, three months, and, and you're not on, you don't need to rely on commissions and overtime, okay? You might be able to use that as well. So we can sometimes get averages and so forth. But if you, if you have the new job, you didn't have a huge job gap, pretty much same line of work, you're salaried or whatever, we can use that income. We just can't use, in many of the cases, we can't use a lot of the boutique additional income 
like commissions and so forth. Sometimes we can, uh, but we we dive down that area when needed because that's kind of getting into a gray area uh, because we don't know that you're going to get those same overtime and everything at the new company. But you can, if you don't have job gaps, same line of work and everything else, we should be able to just, you, know, you move over to a different company and you just get a new paycheck and we can go off of that. So yes, we would love to help you in regards to that as well. Next question we got is I have a credit score of 770. My issue is um, my last two years of taxes, 2020 taxes, I only made $45,000 due to COVID and ended up on disability. Um, so if are you still on disability? Is it permanent disability? Is it short-term disability? That's, that's what we really need to know. Um, so we'd, I'd love to dig into this or at least have me or Kyle or one of you know, our teammates. Some of the guys can answer it. Some might be a little bit, you know, might be a little gray for somebody. But what, I, what we always do, here's what we do. If you call in and you have a question and it stumps us, and I get stumped also sometimes, what we'll do is we'll take all your information, give us a little bit of time. We'll get a hold of an underwriter because we're going to get a hold of the person that actually makes the decision. And we're going to ask them. I'm not going to ask, you know, somebody else in my office or whatever that doesn't have, you know, this is the person actually signing that approval. So I want to run it past them so we can get you an actual answer back to you knowing that we're going to actually close on your loan other than, oh, I hope it closes. You know what I mean? So in this case, I would highly suggest, please give us a call or again, email me and I'll go through it first thing in tomorrow morning. I'll do my morning video and then I'll reply to every one of the emails. If you want me to call you back, please give me a phone number and a time and I'll try to coordinate my schedule accordingly. But hopefully you guys blow up my phone tomorrow in my emails. I'd love it. All right. The next question we have is, Hey there, Dan, now is that the federal reserve meeting and CPI announcements are behind us. Do you see rates stabilizing in the next few weeks? Yeah. And well, here's, here's the tough thing about this time of year, the markets, you got to think of the markets, you know, they, they trade. So you have a person selling, you got, you usually have thousands of people looking to buy and so forth. What happens in, around Christmas and New Year's, a lot of people just go AWOL. They just stop working, go on vacation, come back in the middle or beginning of January and go at it. So there, at the end of the year, usually there's a lot of volatility and it, it'll stabilize. So basically the week between Christmas and New Year's, yeah, I probably wouldn't lock or look to lock anybody during those times because it's usually really really fluctuating during those times. But if we have a huge down day where rates really drop, we're going to lock everybody because the next day we'll probably give it all back. So yes, they should start to stabilize as we get more and more information about the inflation, because that's one big key that piece that the Fed's watching. But the real concern that they're watching right now is this jobs report, and that still has me under a conundrum. So we'll talk about that at some other time. But uh, let me get to the next question. Can we still qualify using my California income prior as long as she leaves first to reside in the new state and I trail after. No. Well, that's going to be really gray. Okay. So um, do, are you going to qualify? Do you rent now? Is I guess is the first thing I would have. Because if you're moving to California or from California to wherever, the first thing people do ask these days, especially underwriters, is where is it going to work? So if your job, we'll get we'll get job verifications. If they say you're not remote, you need to be there, you know, it'll get caught. So those are one of those areas where if you talk to somebody generically, they might just come back and say, yeah, don't worry about it. But then a week before or two weeks before closing, you'll start getting that note like we had in the comment earlier saying, they're still working on my job to figure it out before they'll even issue my clear to close because, and I don't even know if I'm going to close now. That's where you don't want to be. OK, so there's a lot of a lot of these areas are gray. I'd love to answer them for you, but there's a little too in depth. And we have probably a couple hundred people on here that I try to answer questions for. So if you got in-depth questions like this, please. I, and, and the one thing I want to take is I'm always reluctant to call people because I'm always you know, I'm going to get that hard sell. The thing I can promise you is we're not going to do that. We're just going to talk to you like I do here and just going to ask questions. And then we're going to say what I always do on the first call is a fact fact finding. I just, like I said, I get all the pieces of the puzzle and then I say, you know, give me a little bit of time. I'll get back to you. Give me at least a couple hours or at least a day. Let me come up with a plan for you, at least plan A and B. Then I'll get back with you and let's go over them. And then you choose what you think is best for you. So that's what I would love to do with you guys that have those great questions that I, I just don't know the answers to because I need, I need a little more context behind there. Okay. So let's get to the next one. The next one we got is 2020, uh, 2021 taxes. 
I only made 14 due to the coming off disability in August and furnished up trucking school. I've been working strong since October of last year. I forget your, your question. So you might be self-employed. The tough thing, yeah, yours is going to be really tough. The, your, because your income fluctuates probably a lot because you're a truck driver, like in this case, if you were just salaried and you were, you were off of disability for so long and then you went right back to the same job and picked up your salary, that was pretty easy. We can just document that you were off, you're on disability, prove the doctor's stuff and, and get through it. When you're in a, c a commissions job or a mileage based job and you're, you're based on mileage and a bunch of other things and it's not like a 40 hour paycheck, it's really hard to figure out how much your, your income is going to be. And you just said you finished up trucking school. So you just got out of that. So if you have a salary job, if they're like paying you, you know, 50, 60, 70 grand a year salaried, you probably got a good shot at, at getting that done. But if it's per load and a bunch of other things, it's really, really going to be difficult. Just being honest with you. Uh, so, but thank you for the question. Next one. But I've just started making the $10,000 monthly two months ago. I average 5,000 a month for the rest of the working period. Um, again, that's, that's going to be, I'd love the conversation with you um, to see, you know, is it per load? And, th and I don't want to go over this because we have a lot of people waiting. So if you really want a consultation with us, please, you can even go to my website, click uh, schedule a meeting, go on there, schedule a meeting. You can even choose me. I, I'll be there. I promise. Okay. So go to the rate update.com or for those out there that, you know, especially watching on Kyle's channel, Visit the, the house you uh, <laughs> when the house you love dot com and you're going to find it on his his channel, too. So you can put on a con consultation on his, uh, Kyle or my um, my uh, website. So the next question is. Bear with me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to start clicking because I can't go. When it, oh, there's Kyle's bot again. So Adler, you got to you got to show me how to do that. Uh, let's see. Unusual there, Beck. Let's see. If for whatever reason I fall under where I need to be to buy the house I'm looking to buy, will my co-signer having 350,000 stocks and 550,000 K in savings allow us to raise the debt ratio? Unfortunately, no. Uh, and it's it's pretty odd. We're, well, uh, let me put it this way. If you have that, assets help a little bit, but they don't help get you over some areas. Okay. So for example, uh, conventional financing, you can go to 50% debt ratio. If you have $20 million in the bank, you can't go to 51. Doesn't work. It just, it fits outside the guidelines. So unfortunately it, you know, you have a ton of money. What you might be able to do is use some of that money to kind of you know, put more money down on the property. Uh, maybe you have some additional debts that you can pay off with that money. I don't know the scenario, but to have 350,000 in stocks and 50,000 in savings, you have $400,000. You know, you might be forced kind of to put more money down on the house than you wanted, but you know, it might, it might get you where you need to be. So thanks. Thanks for the question. Next one was kind of like my mouse is kind of messing up a little bit. Let's see. I too have about six months in reserves. Fantastic. So again, Kyle's, I wish Kyle was here because he would go through his, his checklist on what he kind of focuses in on before he would buy a house or he just bought a house, uh, believe it or not. So for even those out there saying, you know, the market's going to crash, whatever, you can have Kyle that just bought a house a couple months ago. Okay. So he did his due diligence. He knows what he's doing. He's got the money. He has reserves. He's got the income. He's in a great position. So he's like, I'm going to buy because 10, 15 years from now, this little blip in the radar, we're going to look back and say, eh, it was bad, but eh, we got through it. OK, so people are freaking out now. I get it. I get it. Uh, the next one is I might be moving from a job in sales with commissions to a standard position at the same company. How long will I need to be? No, nope, you, you're, you're good. So as long as you're at the same company, you move positions, we can just base it off of your salary at that point. So you'd be golden. But that was a fantastic question. Thanks for posting. that. But that was that was something I wouldn't even have thought of. My mouse is really acting up. Let's see, how soon can you refinance? You can refinance, well, FHA is tough, but if you go from an FHA convention, really the, the generic guideline is you don't really have to wait for anything. Once you close, you should have the ability to refinance if rates went down. There's, there's probably a lot of people that closed, you know, seven and a half percent, 
seven, three quarters percent rate. Rates are down about one, one and a quarter percent from where we were about two, three months ago. So if you closed and you're in the sevens, you can refinance again. But there are caveats. If it's an FHA loan, you have to wait a certain amount of times. Some people might say, hey, you have to make certain amount of payments. That's normally not the case. Uh, so we, it would depend on what kind of loan you have. So that, again, that's another reason or area where you call or schedule an appointment. We'd love to talk to you to go over that with you. Next one is, whoa, what did I just do? Uh, let's see. Just sent over the Wells Fargo quote and credit score. Great, Abe. So I will get on that. I'll probably review it tonight. You might even get something back from me tonight, but probably not because why? The markets are closed. I don't know where mortgage rates are going to open tomorrow. And as volatile as everything was today, I'd prefer to wait till tomorrow the market open to be able to give you a, a quote on that. So I'll reach out to you tomorrow. You're probably going to get an email from me or somebody just referencing, you know, Kyle in the subject line. And uh, I promise you, we'll, we'll get we'll get back to get you that quote uh, first thing tomorrow, as soon as the market's open. How does USDA loan work? Well, USDA, it's you have to be. What I'd suggest you do is go to Kyle's. Uh, Kyle, if you're still on here, if you have the USDA website that you use, please pop it up. But the first thing you need to do is just figure out is the is the property eligible for a USDA loan? So you can go to USD. Just Google USDA property eligibility. It's going to click up. A, it's going to actually pop up a map. You're going to plug in the address and it's going to say eligible or not eligible. So that is step one. Step two is you have to pass their income calculations. So that, again, you can go in and Google it and say uh, USDA income qualifications. It's going to pull it up. It's going to have a little worksheet. You're going to put in the information. and It's going to say, yes, it's eligible or no, it's eligible, not eligible. If you get an eligible on the property and an eligible with your income, you should be golden as long as you have the credit score and the income and everything else. So if it gets a little confusing and you need our help, please give us a call, shoot us an email, or schedule a meeting. We'd love to help you. The next one is, man, there are a ton of them. Did I do this one right? I was just asking if that was a compensating factor to get the typical. Got it. Okay, I get it. Uh, Kyle, I think he posted just now. Want a free quote? There's his bot again. Let's get to the another one. Quincy, I make 65000 in a very stable job with a yearly with yearly colas promotions. I have 400 th liquid. God bless you, man. Can I afford a $550,000 house? I was thinking of putting 300. Well, yeah, because you're only going to need $200,000 mortgage, maybe. So um, you, you should be fine unless you have a ton of other debt. But if you're sitting on, you're looking to put down that much money and you have that much money in the bank, the first thing that comes to mind is God bless you for having that money. And uh, yeah, you should you should have no problems qualifying. And this is we we would love to help you. you this you you probably be a slam dunk. So and we can help you fast. Uh, Candace, you are more than welcome. Thank thank you guys for for being here. And I truly mean that. I don't just say that just because. How can I get a loan for a fourplex being 100% disabled and the fourplex is over my pre approval when it comes to future rents? So. You're on here. Here's if you're looking to buy a fourplex uh, that you live in, uh, you're disabled, so you probably get disability or social security disability. We can use the rents in all the apartments toward your toward your income. So in many cases, if you're looking to buy a fourplex, those rents are probably going to you know they're probably going to exceed um, what your mortgage payment is going to be. So you might be okay. Uh, that that again, it, it, there's a lot of these, and I, I, I'm trying to answer them the best I can, but these are really need more kind of and more of a conversation. So again, I'm gonna I'm gonna defer it to please reach out to us, give us a call. I'll, I'll answer as generically as I can to get through as many questions as I can, but to dive in deeper, please email, call, schedule appointments. That that's the way to go, and we'll guide you down the right path. I promise you. Uh, the next one is I mean, nothing rude yet. Is this video going to be posted online? Yes. Uh, yes, it is, Pete. And so as soon as I'm done, it actually goes and it, it shows up in the live feeds, but it is posted there permanently. The next question is, I make 30000 a year as a 1099, 795 credit score, $77 a month student loan payments, no other debt, looking to move to Baltimore, Maryland, but nervous. I won't, I won't be pre-approved. What, what loan would you recommend? $3,500? Um, that one's, and you're paid a 1099. So let me explain to those out there that, that 
don't understand that. 1099 means kind of like you're a self-employed contractor. You 1099 means you when you get a paycheck and they say we're going to pay you two grand, you don't get you know you normally a normal job you're going to get twelve hundred bucks because they're going to take taxes and all the other stuff. 1099 means they just give you the income. So it's basically you're like self-employed. So they give it to you. Then you should be filing a Schedule C or a different type of, of tax returns. And you have the ability to start writing off a lot of your you know, expenses. Uh, so I don't know if you ex expensed every, anything, but you have, you have $2,500 a month in income, no debt. You can, I mean, you could technically qualify for a, I would go to get your the biggest bang for your buck, an, an FHA loan, because you can go to a 57% debt ratio. Um, that would probably be your best bet or possibly look into buying a, a, a duplex where you have rental income to help you afford those payments. Or even like the question right before us, if you would contemplate moving into a fourplex, you have now three rentals coming in each month. I'm sure it's probably going to pay your full mortgage payment. Just a thought. Okay. So, but thank you so much for the question. The next question is no debt. Thanks. I'm blessed. You are blessed. <laughs> um, the next thing here is what do we got here? Solo show, Dan. Yeah. Kyle's on here. You got to give him a thumbs down, but wish him, wish him health. Hi, Dan, here again. Just wanted to wish you well and hang out. So thank you so much. Thank you. We're getting a lot of thank yous now. And that might be, that is the end. You got to be kidding me. So we went through in an hour and a half, we got through all the questions. So that is it for today. So I, again, guys, I'm not going to say I apologize. We're doing the best we can. Uh, by, by back rob and everything else. I'm in my basement. I, I didn't bring my, my cameras home and everything else because I thought we were going to be on Kyle's uh, system. That's okay. Kyle, we're just hoping that Kyle gets better. I love when you guys participate in all this because without you guys doing this, uh, we're nothing. You know, our goal here is, let me just, let me give you, I'll close with this and I'll, I'll leave it at this. We're here to help you guys. Okay. Our goal, my goal and Kyle's goal. The reason why I reached out to Kyle is I love his personality. He has a compassion to help people. So do I, okay? Our goal here is to truly educate and inform you guys. There's no agenda. We don't, I don't, I don't if you buy a house, great. If you don't buy a house, that's fine too. But what we're trying to do is once you, once you provide you with the facts, you know, so many people, like somebody called me on here, you know, I'm manipulating the systems or whatever. Guys, I don't control real estate. I give you the facts and the, the data that's out there. Please use it. I also give you a lot of tools and Kyle you has a ton of tools for you to use. Please use them. Um, but we are, what we do, we're mortgage advisors. That's what we do for a living. We, we post these videos to educate and inform you guys. But when you get to the time where you want to buy that house, or you're like, okay, I really would like to at least dissect and see what, what or kick the tires. That's where we need you to call us. I love these events because we can skim through it and answer some questions quick and easy. Uh, but a lot of these, they're complex. And if you're looking to buy a three, four, five hundred, one point two million dollar house, you really need to know what you're doing. I wouldn't rely on jumping online and just typing in some stuff and getting a quick quote and whatever, because you might be from like that person at the beginning who said, you know, I'm two weeks away from closing and they still haven't even validated my job yet. Getting a little nervous. That's what we don't want you to do. So we want to make the experience. We're going to help you make an educated decision, you know, on, on maybe if you should buy a house or not. That's up to you, but we'll give you the tools to do that. But once you make that decision, we're here as your advisor from the day you make that decision all the way till you get the keys in your in your hand. So other than that, please, if you guys would go to Kyle's channel, make sure you give him a uh, get well better or get well soon uh, post there. But please, if you guys would give us a thumbs up for the efforts that him and I are putting into this. Uh, subscribe down below to both of our channels if you would. Leave some comments. We try to answer comments, but a lot of them are just really bad. So I try to get off of there because I take a lot of those personal. But uh, that's our show for today. Join us next week. I got a couple things I'm going to try to do some research on to answer for next week. And I promise you I'll have our credit guy on next week. I, between the changing and the systems, it kind of messed some things up. So that's what happened. But uh, again, God bless, guys. Thank you so much for joining because without you guys, we're nothing. So take care. 